White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders joins me now on Overtime here on set. Uh, Nancy Pelosi risks what with her party, and what do Democrats risk pushing impeachment? What are the stakes? Uh, look, I think Nancy Pelosi is clearly already starting to lose control of her party. I think we're seeing that on a lot of the things that have taken place over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm glad that she sees what the rest of us see and that there's no reason, no cause for impeachment. The president's done an incredible job in his first two years in office. Uh, the country is better than it's been in decades, and we're actually making progress on a number of fronts. Uh, I think it's time for other Democrats and Nancy Pelosi's party to get on board, start doing what they were elected to do, do their jobs, and quit trying to focus so much on making excuses for the uh, historic loss that they suffered in 2016. Let's work with the president and solve some real problems. Sarah, inside the White House, are you talking about what the road could look like if you know, it, it, Democrats press with this. Is there some talk, some strategy that you're already working on uh, toward impeachment? We're focused on doing what the American people actually care about, whether it's growing the economy, creating jobs like the more than five million jobs the president has created since being elected to office, defeating ISIS, rebuilding the military. These are things that people are sitting around in America that they actually care about. Nobody wants to see President Trump impeached because other than Democrats and Congress who are failing, who have no other message. Um, and that's because our country is doing better. And they know that that is hard for them to run against in 2020. Um, and I, I think they've got a very, very hard uphill battle ahead of them. You know, it's interesting. Uh, some are saying that it could be a signal that the Mueller report, the investigation, might not have in it what Democrats were hoping uh, in terms of strong teeth. And so they're already looking ahead. We'll report the news as it happens. I want to talk with you about the president's national emergency that has a vote on Thursday, more than $8 billion for his wall. Uh, what is the strategy behind getting back to the border battle at this point? It's the same thing that it has been all along, and that's to secure the border. The president has a constitutional duty, and frankly, Congress has given him constitutional authority in order to do what is necessary to protect the people in this country. We know that we have a crisis at the border. Democrats know that we have a crisis at the border. Unfortunately, the president's the only one stepping up and saying, look, I'm not going to continue to kick the can down the road. I'm going to make sure that we put forward things that work. And one of the things that we know that works is securing the border, and you have to have a wall in order to so, do that. So, you know, I had asked this very early on. If you thought that you were going to declare an emergency, why not do that before shutting down the government and everything else that has gone on? Uh, you got $1.4 billion, far shorter than what the president had asked for, even most recently. But why not just go ahead and take that step at that point? Point. Because the president wanted to actually allow Congress the opportunity to do what they're supposed to do. So when they and came him, up with that agreement, why didn't he live with the one point? Four billion. Because we want to exhaust all of our options, because just getting partial things done is not enough for this president. He wants the entire package. Um, at the same time, it helps set the table for the national emergency. A lot of people didn't understand the real crisis that we were under. And I think that during that time, you saw the case build. We used every opportunity, exhausted every re resource in order to allow Congress to do their job. And when they failed time and time again, the president said, we can't wait any longer. We have to step forward. Real quickly, the action. president calling on Republicans last ditch effort come with him on this journey you're not getting Republican support I think that overwhelmingly the majority of Republicans 100% uh, support the president and they certainly support border security the question for some of them is process related um, but we're still hopeful that at the end of the day, they do the right thing. They focus on what matters most, and that's protecting people in this country and allowing the president to do what Congress themselves have given him the authority to do. Congress actually gave the president the right to declare a national emergency. It's why every president prior to this one has been able to do that. And it's astonishing to me that people are making this in uh, to a big deal. When well, they some Republicans when are concerned have, that if you do it on this uh, issue, then it gives entree for Democrats to do it on climate change or something else. I want to move on, Let's though. Let's be honest. Democrats are going to do that regardless of what this right. president does because Congress has given them the authority. If they don't like that, then they should change that law. So the president was telling Breitbart today that he doesn't want immigrants coming into the United States who are dependent on the welfare programs. You know he has lit up social media by saying that, and people around the country and the world, <laughs> he has that ability. I know he does. But, but this is a topic when you come in to this country, uh, 
what is the president trying to say about those people? If they come here and it's legal and they're in the system, they can't use the resources that no, the Americans point, use? The, the point the president is making, um, uh, let's first and foremost start with the fact that America is the most generous and hospitable country on the face of the planet. Um, we help millions of people all over the globe, whether it's bringing them into our country or helping them in their home countries. And the president doesn't want to stop doing that. But what he doesn't want to do is bring people people in that will forever, and he, if you read the full context of the quote, he says that would uh, be dependent on the government for the next 50 years. We have trillions of dollars in debt. The, frankly, the system we have right now is unsustainable. We can't, we don't have the resources to care for our veterans the way that we should. We don't have the resources to care for Americans but the Sarah, way that we you should. But see what president people wants to look see those things fixed. The president when they hear long, him talk like that, though. Yeah, but the president has long talked about the fact he wants a merit-based system. Uh, that hasn't changed. And if the they come wants, to this country with a merit-based system, are you saying they have to be rich when they get here? Not at all. The president wants people to be empowered. He wants people that won't forever be dependent on the system. Uh, that's actually one of the greatest things about America is that we don't want people dependent on the system. We I, I just wonder how your freedom to grow and have opportunity that. to be successful. And I think that's mm -hmm. getting lost in the debate. Uh, Democrats are continuing to criticize the president's 2020 budget proposal this week as a non-starter. That's what they're calling it. Here's House Budget Committee Chair John Yarmouth. It extends the uh, 2017 tax cuts, adds a trillion dollars to the deficit, and then slashes Medicaid, Medicare, student loans, SNAP program, uh, just about everything that, uh, again, the vulnerable populations in this country rely on, as well as middle-income Americans. So it's a very, very cruel-hearted budget. So the president is looking at cutting some areas. What's the bottom line with this new budget proposal, with some Democrats saying it's a non-starter? I think it's sad that Democrats think that it's a non-starter to try to get our fiscal house in order. The president has put forward uh, a proposal that would help us balance the budget in 15 years. It also cuts non-defense spending by $2.7 trillion. Uh, this is progress. And frankly, it's sad that Democrats don't want to balance the budget, the idea that they think that they can spend themselves out of the problems that we have uh, is frankly just laughable. And we've got to start looking at ways to rein in the spending, increase growth, and that's the stuff that you'll see reflected in the president's policy. I thought that those were bipartisan issues. I did too. I didn't know that they were no longer bipartisan. I think it's not that they don't agree with the policy. I think that it's they don't agree with the president. They don't they, like the messenger. They care more about beating up this president than they do helping people in this right. country. Real quickly, you and I were watching the news as you sat so patiently here as we set the show up. Boeing is a big deal. Where is the president on the FAA uh, not grounding Boeing jets at this point, 737 MAX, as we see more countries, including the UK region, join in on, we're going to put those planes on the ground until we can figure out why they keep crashing. Two of them, major crashes so far. Uh, certainly this is very early in the process. I think the first place we have to start uh, is by offering our condolences and our sympathies to all of the people that were impacted and affected by both of these crashes. Um, and we have to review and see what actually took place. We know that a lot of people in the industry have started to voice concerns about the amount of technology and taking the power out of the hands of the pilots. You saw the president talk about that in his tweets earlier today. Um, um, this is going to be a process, and we're going to be in constant contact uh, through the Department of Transportation, the FAA, and make determination of Some the Some important time. points that you're making there. My dad, a former war pilot, has said, you know, you don't want to disengage. You want those pilots to be as hands-on as possible. Technology can be our friend, but we've got to make it such. Uh, you and I didn't get to connect at the beginning because we had so much to get to. <laughs> Thank you for Absolutely. walking and, and joining me. I know it's a journey here in the middle of the day. Good to see you. <laughs> and uh, first press conference in a, in a while there yesterday. Yesterday. I have a lot of questions myself for the next one. Good to see All you, right. Sarah Always Sanders. Always great to be with you, Harris. Thank you.